You can create constraints in code, but you can do a whole lot just with Interface Builder. Xcode's UI offers several ways to create constraints. But no matter which method you use, you'll ultimately be creating the same types of constraint objects. So we'll show you some options, and you'll find your own way of working that combines them to your liking. First, we'll be working with the Add New Constraints button at the bottom of the editor. It's useful for creating constraints between a single view and its nearest neighbor. That works on all four sides. You can also create fixed width or height constraints with it. Next to Add New Constraints is the Align button. One way to use it is by selecting several views, pressing it, and then aligning at least one of their edges. It's also possible to use the Align button for just one view to center it in its super view, but we'll primarily be using other methods for that in this section. Let's see the Add New Constraints button in action. The first thing we'll be doing here is creating some explicit width and height constraints for our buttons. That will allow us to override the height that gets applied to them based on their intrinsic content size. To do that, let's first select the button on top, then hit the Add New Constraints button. Select the checkbox for height and enter 50. Then you can hit the Return key or the Add Constraints button on the bottom. I like keyboard shortcuts, so I'm hitting Return. Now the button is 50 points tall. To do the other ones all at once, we can select them, and I'll do that with a selection using the Shift modifier key to select all three of them and a little extra. Then Command click on that little extra, which is the stack view. Now we could take the same steps again, clicking on Add New Constraints and setting height to 50, and then you'd see at the bottom that you can add more than one constraint at once, but don't do that. Instead, add the top button to the selection using Command Click and go back to the same menu. Because we want them all to have the same height, there's a better way to do this. Check Equal Heights. And now you'll see at the bottom, Add Three Constraints again. I'll hit the button itself just to show you that it works. Now we've got the height constraint for all the buttons. The stack view continues to take care of laying everything out accordingly. Next, let's drag a label in from the object library to the bottom left of our view to hold a copyright notice. Double-clicking to edit the text, option G makes the copyright symbol, and I'll follow that with, please do not pirate the pirate handbook. Next, before we set up more constraints, let's drag the right side of the frame's edge over to the guide on the right. There's not enough room to show the text. That might not be true of a larger phone like the iPhone X, but there's no automatic resizing happening. We're just locking the frame's width. The top section of the Add New Constraints panel allows you to add constraints to multiple edges of your view in quick succession. Constraining to margins is frequently helpful, both to provide a native feeling look to your app and to avoid your views getting obscured by other UI. But if you want to constrain to the exact edges of other views, you can uncheck the Constrain to Margins box. This time around, let's make sure as we add new constraints to this label, that we do constrain to margins. The constraints we make will be to the leading and trailing margins of the view with zero offset. Create those constraints. These margins we've constrained to are 16 points from the leading and trailing edges of the view on iPhones. Also, let's create a constraint to the bottom. This time, make sure constrained to margins is unchecked. And with that, let's use the dropdown to select the safe area and then set the value to eight. You can see where the safe area is if you click on it in the document outline. By constraining to the safe area, you'll ensure that your views don't run into the status bar on top or this bottom bar on the iPhone X. That looks good on the 10. Let's switch back to the SE. It's not perfect yet, but let's have a look at how the ellipsis on the right edge might be better than the alternative. If we delete the trailing constraint we made in the size inspector, the text just runs off the screen. Let's undo that, making sure the label is selected and hitting Command Z. And then, Let's make even better use of the trailing constraint by allowing the font size to shrink. We can do that in the Attributes Inspector in the Auto Shrink section. Choosing Minimum Font Scale and going with the default of 0.5 allows the text to be rendered smaller than the 17 points that are set above. Looking good. If you'd like, you can preview more than one device rendering at a time. To do that, open the Assistant Editor with this button at the top, then choose Preview from the drop-down menu at the upper left. I'll choose the two smallest devices in portrait mode to make sure the text scales well for both. Then we can switch back to the 10 in the editor. And to get an idea of what the text looks like when it doesn't take up the whole width of the screen, I'll rotate the SE preview. 